Hi, my name is Dr. Brandon Decker, and I will be your trainer today. I hope you enjoy this lesson. By the end of this course, you should be able to articulate how a right map is most often used, discriminate the essential elements of a right map, locate key areas on a right map and understand their relevance, and identify resources for further learning on the subjects of rash measurement and right map application. Instructors often determine students' ability using a raw score or a percentage. However, that method doesn't inform teachers about the quality or the true difficulty of individual questions. But right maps can accurately rank students by their ability and questions by their difficulty. And this is especially useful if the test is used as a placement test. Statisticians use a type of measurement called Item Response Theory, or IRT which analyzes data differently than classical statistics. Right maps use WinStep software to complete rash measurement, which is a type of IRT. Because people are more likely to complete a shorter survey, survey designers really care about including only the questions which are most productive. A right map can be used to cut unnecessary questions. There are four steps to using a right map. First, before the WinSteps analysis, you should review the test and predict the order of item difficulty. Second, create a right map and then compare predictions to actual item difficulty. Look for anomalies which indicate item misfit. Third, identify areas of concern, delete or modify items, and use with a new sample of learners. Last, repeat this process until you have an efficient test with few assessment gaps and no redundancy but which measures the latent trait you are targeting. Take note of the person and item measures and means. The person or item measures on the right and left are written in logits, aka log odds. They are estimates of true intervals of item difficulty and person ability. Now, those people at the top represent those with more ability, and those at the bottom are those with less ability with these items or questions. Those items at the top are the ones which are more challenging to this group, whereas the ones at the bottom are less challenging. Here are some other essential elements on a right map. See the key with the hashtags and periods. For this assessment, the hashtag is the equivalent of two students, and the period refers to one student. Now this changes depending on the number of learners in an assessment. Note the M. It refers to the means or averages of the people and items. The S remains standard deviation and the T is two standard deviations from the mean. The plus signs along the vertical line align with logit numbers on the right and left. Now note the relationships between the items on the right and the learners on the left. Directly across from learners, those items they have a 50% chance of getting them right. Items that are one logit above, the learners have a 25% chance of getting right. And items that are one logit below them, they have a 75% chance of getting that right, approximately. Now see L18, R96, and B75 and 77. This is an example of six students who are well measured by this assessment. Many items measuring the same ability may represent redundant questions. However, as Lieber noted in 2010, for placement tests, it is important to have multiple items around the cutoff mark, since that means less area in the score is in the area where it is most important to be exact. Thus, the groups of grammar and vocabulary items will remain in this placement test because they are near the cutoff point. Now note the large listening gap right near the cutoff point. This is an area of concern. There are two other assessment gaps. There is a gap above item G26 in the grammar column. It is quite large. And there is a smaller one in the vocabulary column between items V61 and V62. The circled T at the bottom of the bell curve represents two standard deviations below the mean for students, which this test creator felt was a good 
cutoff line for identifying unnecessary items. So all those below the black dotted line would be removed. There are a few areas which need to be addressed before the placement test is ready. There are three assessment gaps in the listening, grammar, and vocabulary sections. In particular, the grammar gap is large, and being at the top, this means few of the students above the student mean have grammar items to assess their skills. Additionally, the listening gap is important because the cutoff line for this placement test runs directly through it but there are no listening items near that line when there should be two to three to ensure their placement is accurate. Additionally, there are at least three vocabulary and two listening questions which appear to be redundant, though a closer inspection of each is needed. And all the items below the second standard deviation are likely unnecessary in this placement test. However, all of these suggestions are based on the assumption that a large range of students has taken this exam. If this is not true, then another group of students could identify new assessment gaps or erase the current ones. Thus, it's important to use well-targeted sample before beginning this process. Please press pause for each question to give yourself time to answer the question. Question 1. Find the item and person means in this right map. If you identified this as the person mean and this one as the item mean, then you are correct. Take a moment to answer this question. The order of the item and person means in this test indicates. If you chose answer two, B, the questions are too easy for most of the students, then you are correct. Take a moment to find the two areas with the greatest potential for redundancy. If you chose these listening questions and these vocabulary questions, then you are correct. If there are more than two items on the same line, on the same subject, then there is a likely redundancy. Take a moment to answer this question. Redundancy means that items measure the same level of difficulty, true or false. If you chose the first response, true, then you are correct. Take a moment to find the three questions measuring the students at one logic of ability. If you identified this as the one logic, these as the students, and these questions, L8, R85, and V62, then you are correct. Take a moment to find the answer to this question. What are a student's chances of answering each item correctly? If you chose C, B, and A, then you are correct. Take a moment to answer this question. If there are no questions directly across from a student, what is this called? you chose answer option C, assessment gap, then you are correct. Take a moment to find the three largest assessment gaps within two standard deviations of the person mean.
if you chose the space, the space, and the space, then you are correct. Take a moment to answer this question. What is the greatest concern with assessment gaps in a placement test? If you chose answer C, students will be incorrectly placed below or above the cutoff line, then you are correct. Here are some more resources for you. I highly recommend the book by Bond and Fox, and the Wind Steps Rash Tutorials and the Rash Measurement Form are extremely useful. You can also contact me if you'd like to get more information about this video or to consult with a specialist.